Hello everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Because Canada Day is upon us, I thought I would do some Canadian content. It's still going to be creepy, it's still going to be spooky, it's still going to be fun, but it is not a short story. It is in fact a poem by a gentleman by the name of Robert Service. And if you're a Canadian, I'm sure this name will ring a bell. Most of us, I think, do one of his poems, The Cremation of Sam McGee, in elementary school. That's the cat. Sorry about that, folks. And um, that's probably the work of his that is most well known to people. Uh, however, today I'm going to be reading a different poem of his called The Ballad of the Black Fox Skin. Now, Robert Service was producing his work in the early part of the 20th century. He was a British, um, worked, I think, mostly in banking and things when he was working. He came to Canada, to the north, to the west, and his poems about those places are very, at least they're very famous in Canada. I don't know how well known he is internationally. Uh, but that's who he was. He did a ton of these sort of northern ballad sort of things. And a lot of them actually will be a, a pretty good fit for this channel. Because a lot of them, even his war stuff, which he did do as well, do have kind of a, a creepy background, a creepy undertone to them. So I like a lot of his stuff, so I thought I would share one of his poems for Canada Day. Now, before I get going, I'm just going to give you the usual disclaimer that although this is not Victorian, this is early 20th century, just as I said uh, for the last video, um, that still means that there will probably be, in fact, I know there are, especially in terms of indigenous people in this text, there will be some ugly opinions expressed uh, in terms of race, religion, gender, all those things are definitely possibilities in these older works. And in this particular poem, I do remember that there are um, several um, unpleasant, several problematic words that are used to describe indigenous people. So do be aware of that and then, you know, make an informed decision if you think this video is right for you or not. So with uh, that disclaimer at the, at the front there, uh, let's dive into The Ballad of the Black Fox Skin by Robert Service. There was claw-fingered Kitty and Windy Ike living the life of shame. When on to them, in the long, long night, came the man who had no name. Bearing his prize of a black fox pelt, out of the wild he came. His cheeks were blanched as the flume-head foam when the brown spring freshets fall flow. Deep in their dark, sin-calcined pits were his somber eyes aglow. They knew him far for the fitful man who spat forth blood on the snow. Did you ever see such a skin, quoth he? There's not in the world so fine. Such fullness of fur as black as the night. Such luster, such size, such shine. It's life to a one-lunged man like me. It's London, it's women, it's wine. The moose hides called it the devil fox and swore that no man could kill. That he who hunted it soon or late must surely suffer some ill. But I laughed at them in their old squaw tales. <laughs> I'm laughing still. For look ye, the skin, it's as smooth as sin, and black as the core of the pit. By gun or by trap, whatever the hap, I swore I would capture it. By star and by star, a field and afar, I hunted and would not quit. For the devil fox, it was swift and sly, and seemed to fleer at me. I would wake in fright by the campfire light, hearing its evil glee. Into my dreams its eyes would gleam, and its shadow I would see. It sniffed and ran from the ptarmigan I had poisoned to excess. Unharmed it sped from my wrathful lead, was if I'd shot by guess. 
Yet it came by night in the stark moonlight to mock at my weariness. I tracked it up where the mountains hunch like the vertebrae of the world. I tracked it down to the death-still pits where the avalanche is hurled, from the glooms to the sacerdotal snows where the carded clouds are curled, from the vastitudes where the world protrudes through the clouds like seas up shoaled. I held its track till it led me back to the land I had left of old. The land I had looted many moons. I was weary and sick and cold. I was sick, soul sick, of the futile chase, and then and there I swore the foul fiend fox might scathless go, for I would hunt no more. Then I rubbed my eyes. In vast surprise, it stood by my cabin door. A rifle raised in the wraith-like gloom and a vengeful shot that sped, a howl that would thrill a cream-faced corpse when the demon fox lay dead. Yet never a sign of a wound, and never a drop he bled. So that was the end of the great black fox, and here is the prize I've won. And now for a drink to cheer me up, I've mushed since the early sun. We'll drink a toast to the sorry ghost of the fox whose race is run. Now claw-fingered Kitty and Windy Ike, bad as the worst were they, in their roadhouse down by the river trail they waited and watched for prey. With wine and song they joyed night long, and they slept like swine by day. For things were done in the midnight sun that no tongue will ever tell. And men there be who walk earth free, but whose names are writ in hell, are writ in flames with the guilty names of Fournier and Labelle. Put not your trust in a poke of dust, would you sleep the sleep of sin, for there be those who would rob your clothes ere yet the dawn comes in, and a prize likewise in a woman's eyes is a peerless black fox skin. Put your faith in the mountain cat you lie within its lair, Trust the fangs of the mother wolf and the claws of the lead grip bear. But oh, the wiles and gold-toothed smiles of the dance-hall wench, beware. Wherefore it was beyond all laws that the lusts of men restrain. A man drank deep and sank to sleep, never to wake again. And the Yukon swallowed to a hole the cold corpse of the slain. The black fox skin a shadow cast from the roof, nigh to the floor. And sleek it seemed, and soft it gleamed, and the woman stroked it o'er. And the man stood by with a brooding eye, and gnashed his teeth and swore. When thieves and thugs fall out and fight, there's fell arrears to pay. And soon or late, sin meets its fate, and so it fell one day, that claw-fingered kitty and windy Ike fanged up like dogs at bay. The skin is mine, all mine, she cried. I did the deed alone. It's share and share with a gilt yoke pair, he hissed in a pregnant tone. And so they snarled like malamutes over a mildewed bone. And so they fought by fear untaught till haply it befell. One dawn of day she slipped away to Dawson Town to sell the fruit of sin, that this black fox skin that had made their lives a hell. She slipped away as still he lay, she clutched the wondrous fur. Her pulses beat, her foot was fleet, her fear was as a spur. She laughed with glee, she did not see him rise and follow her. The bluffs up rear and grimly peer, far over Dawson Town, they see its lights ablaze a nights, and harshly they look down. They mock the plan and plot of man, with grim ironic frown. The trail was steep, was at the time when swiftly sinks the snow. All honeycombed, the river ice was rotting down below. The river chafed beneath its rind with many a mighty throw. And up the swift and oozy drift a woman climbed in fear, clutching to her a black fox fur as if she held it dear, and hard she pressed it to her breast, then windy Ike drew near. She made no moan, her heart was stone, she read his smiling face. And like a dream flashed all her life's dark horror and disgrace. A moment only, with a snarl, he hurled her into space. She rolled for nigh a hundred feet, she bounded like a ball. From crag to crag she caromed down through snow and timber fall. A hole gaped in the river ice, then the spray flashed. That was all. 
A bird sang for the joy of spring, so piercing, sweet, and frail. And blinding bright, the land was dight in gay and glittering mail. And with a wondrous black fox skin, a man slid down the trail. A wedge-faced man there was who ran along the river bank, who stumbled through each drift and slew, and ever slipped and sank, and ever cursed his maker's name, and ever hooch he drank. He traveled like a hunted thing, hard-harried, sore distressed. The old grandmother moon crept out from her cloud-quilted nest. The aged mountains mocked at him in their primeval rest. Grim shadows diapered the snow, the air was strangely mild. The valley's girth was dumb with mirth, the laughter of the wild, the still, sardonic laughter of an ogre or a child. The river writhed beneath the ice, it groaned like one in pain, and yawning chasms opened wide and closed and yawned again, and sheets of silver heaved on high until they split in twain. From out the roadhouse by the trail they saw a man afar, Make for the narrow river reach where the swift cross currents are, where frail and worn the ice is torn and the angry waters jar. But they did not see him crash and sink into the icy flow. They did not see him clinging there, gripped by the undertow, flying with bleeding fingernails at the jagged ice and snow. They found a note beside the hole where he had stumbled in. Here met his fate by evil luck, a man who lived in sin. And to the one who loves me least, I leave this black fox skin. And strange it is, for though they searched the river all around, no trace or sign of black fox skin was ever after found, though one man said he saw the tread of hoofs deep in the ground. And that is it. That is the poem, The Ballad of the Black Fox Skin by Robert Service. And uh, I don't know about you, but the moral of this is if the locals, be they uh, indigenous, as in this case, or just other locals, tell you that the weird black fox that has a supernatural ability to avoid death is bad news and you should stay away from it, you should listen to those people. Don't shoot magic animals. It will probably not end well for you. So I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed this poem. If, you've en if you have liked this, uh, please seek out some other works by Robert Service. His poems are all, well, not all, but a, a good portion of them are sort of in this vein, especially if you're dealing with his really northern sort of Canadian stuff as opposed to his, um, his war material. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Feel free to please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Uh, in the comments section, you're free to uh, leave a suggestion for something you would like me to read in a future video. So thank you very much, everyone. Bye.